Okay, so this is the part two of the uh, of the build. The um, and I did maiden fly it um, a few days ago. Finally, after two years of building this, and um, and I decided to uh, before I fly it again, which will probably be tomorrow. Uh, I decided to go ahead and buy uh, three of these SMC packs. They're 2400 uh, milliamp packs. They're L LIHV packs. So they're 4.35 volts per cell rather than uh, 4.20 volts, volts per cell. Um, I did upgrade the ESC. I also got an ESC, the Plush uh, 32, has the ability to um, uh, change or be programmed to recognize LIHV uh, type battery types. The Skywalker that I installed a couple years ago uh, did not have that. Now, of course, you can use LiPo, but I just I want to make sure everything is LIHV compatible. So, uh, so I did buy that uh, Turnigy uh, uh, ESC, and uh, I have programmed it for LIHV. I have tried the default advanced timing of 18 degrees 24 degrees and 30 degrees 30 degrees is definitely providing the most the highest amount of watts uh i believe it was over a just over a thousand and then i've also tried the auto mode which seemed like it was setting it back down to around 18 degrees so um uh anyways this is set for the high high timing of 30 degrees um, also you can set the, uh, ESC to recognize it, the, um, motor type as an EDF, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know what it does, but uh, it, you can set it for normal, uh, disc type or EDF. So I've set it for EDF. I have used, uh, Turnigy for, I don't know, the last 15 years. Uh, most of my ESCs are all that, uh, all the Turnigy's, um, I ended up putting a Skywalker in here because they were out of ESCs when I wanted to buy it when I was building this a couple years ago. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a, oops, a thrust to weight ratio. I have taken out the afterburner. Um, it was adding a little bit more weight, but it was also the bulky uh, light that attaches to the back of the EDF back here was I believe just obstructing a lot of the airflow. Um, with the lipo pack that I was using, which was a 2200 Liperior uh, 75C rated pack, uh, I was uh, getting greater than one to one. Once I put in the afterburner system, I was not getting greater than one to one. Um, I will say that I have been running some tests and I, you know, I, I was expecting way more power from these uh, LIHV packs, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I was getting about the same powers um, on the previous setup, set timing set to high. I was getting over a thousand watts. This thing, I'm getting over a thousand watts on high. But uh, anyways, here's a, uh, a thrust to weight ratio test using this the nice thing about this pack though is while i may not it appears i'm not really getting a whole lot of extra power over the high uh c rated pack i uh, used before um it should give me more a longer flight time it's 2400 uh, milliamps at at uh, 4.35 volts so so we'll see we'll see if it gives me a little bit longer flight time i'm not certain about the performance because I'm just not seeing it uh, with the watt meter that I've been using. So, but let's just go ahead and do a thrust to weight ratio test. Whoa. Yes, definitely, definitely has plenty of vertical climb. <laughs> At least on a fully charged pack. I'm not certain what happens after I've run it for a while. Um, but as you can see, it goes straight up. Yeah, that works.
All right. So that was definitely greater than one to one. It went straight up from a hover. So, um, and I was not throwing it up. I mean, I was just holding it and then letting go. So, um, let's go ahead and do a, a watt meter test on this battery pack. I need to recharge it. I want to charge, I want to do it from, uh, 100% full, but, uh, I'll be right back. Oh, the, um, the battery pack with this, as in the previous build, the foam here goes all the way out to here. And I, and I melted it all back to the battery wall with the Liperior 75C rated pack. This heavy one here, which I think it was 281 grams, um, pushed to the back. Uh, I was barely able to achieve the range of the COG in the book. It was like, uh, I think it's uh, supposed to be like 83 to 88. And now well, let me just verify that. Yeah, 83 to 88. I was getting 82, 83. So it was on the forward uh, part of that range. The nice thing is, is this, this SMC pack pushed all the way back. I am now dead center in the range um, at, uh, so 85, degree, 85 millimeters. Um, so as you can see right there, it says COG 85 millimeter, it's dead center. So that's a positive, but I'm just not seeing all that extra power that I thought I would. Um, I probably could have gotten by with a 60 amp ESC instead of the 80, but, uh, but it's in there, so I'm not gonna pull it out. All right, I'm gonna charge this up and then do a, uh, uh, a watt meter test on this. Okay, we just did the uh, thrust to rate ratio. As you can see, it went straight up, definitely. Uh, and this is set for 30 degree high timing. We're gonna do a watt test on it, see how much power we're getting out of it. So I just recharged the battery. Again, this is using the LIHV battery. So uh, let's go ahead and, and test this out. Okay. All right, let's see what we're getting out of this now. Same battery as the thrust to weight ratio test and just charged it. Um, and I am 1067.9 peak watts, 67.08 peak amps. So 67 peak amps and then voltage dropped down to 15.32. So that's pretty good. Uh, actually, that's probably the best I've uh, seen so far um, from this, uh, from these tests that I've been doing. Again, this is using the Turnigy 80 amp ESC. I've got the timing set for the highest, which is 30 degrees and uh, defaults at 18 degrees but i'm bumped it up to 30. um and what else can i tell you about it oh and it is set for i had to buy this and put this in because the skywalker didn't have lihv programmability so this one does so it is set for um uh, the esc is set to use lihv batteries with a uh, cutoff voltage of 3.2 volts all right, so there you go. I think this is the setup. This is what I'm going to try on the next Maiden. <coughs> and uh, like I said earlier, battery sits all the way back to the wall here. It perfectly uh, centers in the center of the COG at 85 millimeters from the leading edge. I did put in a Spectrum AR630, which I think I had a 620 in there before. Um, I went ahead and bought another one of these based on my test with the uh, new FMS 
um, 64 millimeter F-16 Fighting Falcon that just came out with the nav lights. I just bought that. I made in that last week along with this plane. And that one I decided to put in a uh, AR-630. First one I ever bought and because uh, I don't use stabilization. Um, but uh, I, I, I bought it specifically so that I could uh, flip the switch to to safe mode and then hand launch it and uh, and 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 hopefully take out any bad hand launches and self level it and then I could take over and uh, and and flip the switch to um, AS3X mode or turn it off. I originally made this with the AS3X turned off. Uh, well, I didn't have it on actually. I, I meant the uh, F16 I made and with it turned off and then after. Um, after it was uh, uh, in the air and I'd had it trimmed out. Then I tried the F-16 with the safe mode with my buddy throwing it and without touching the um, the transmitter sticks and it flew out and leveled off and then I flipped the switch to AS-3X and it worked great. So I decided to uh, buy another one and put it in this plane because I don't want to have to rely on somebody else throwing the plane for me. Um, but uh, I'll probably go ahead and remade this because everything's been changed now. Um, remade it at, with it turned off and then uh, test it out with it turned on and my buddy throwing it and then uh, test it out with it uh, safe mode turned on and me throwing it. So there you go. Um, that's the new, the change, the new change that's been done on the uh, F-22 Raptor. Here's my final thoughts on this uh, change that I've done to the build, part two of the uh, build. Um, uh, again, what I did is I uh, replaced the ESC with a Turnigy plus 32 uh, 80 amp ESC, uh, mainly because it has the LIHV um, uh, option in the programming of the ESC um, as far as battery type. Um, <laughs> Again, I've gone with the higher voltage uh, uh, SMC, uh, 2400 milliamp, 4.35 volt per cell uh, battery. And I also switched out the AR410 with an AR630 for the flight stabilizing um, uh, safe mode on hand launch. My final thought is as far as performance, and here are the three benefits, I guess. Um, uh, Although the first one I'm going to talk about is the power rating. I expected, I'm a little surprised, I expected definitely way more power coming out of this. These battery packs as opposed to the Liperior 2275C uh, battery that I, was, that I used in my Maiden a few days ago. So uh, I think I, the wattage went up from 1,000 watts up to 1064 maybe 60 yeah i think it's 1061 i don't remember but uh, whatever it is in the video so a marginal increase in uh wattage in power the other two be uh benefits however uh that are not marginal benefits number one the the battery pack is lighter it's 218 grams as opposed to 281 this thing is just a, a heavy beast and probably with the high C rating, probably why I was getting really good power rating out of this battery. Um, uh, so it's a lighter battery, plus it enabled me to move it all the way back and to the to the back wall and be dead center in the um, range of COG that's in the book. So I'm at 85 from the leading edge, which is dead center. Um, using this heavier one, uh, it was, it was, the CG was about a millimeter ahead of the range in the, that's listed in the book. So it was a little bit nose heavy. This should be able to, I mean, again, the, because it's lighter, it's dead center in this, in the COG. It should have a better speed, top speed, I would think. Uh, it's, it's, the plane is going to be slightly lighter. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I, Aside from being a bat lighter battery pack and the COG being dead on dead center now um, 
and a slightly marginal increase of performance and speed or power it, overall it should be an okay um uh, uh, uh change but i was expecting more out of these power wise but overall i think it was a good change was it worth buying three of these smc packs plus switching out the uh, turnigy or the esc um probably i mean i'm all about having the best possible aircraft you can build and and this definitely will uh, fit the bill so and with the addition of the ar630 uh, make it easier for me to hand launch without having uh, bad hand launches and ending up that end up in the in, as a crash. So um, So that's, those are the upgrades since the original build that I published a couple years ago uh, I'm hoping to go out tomorrow to fly this to remade the whole thing now that it's got it basically new everything and We'll see I'll let you uh, let you make that decision, but overall I think this is the optimal setup that you can put together for the free wing f-22 Raptor 64 millimeter okay so here is the true fire led afterburner here's the little module uh, that was stuck inside the fuselage this thing right here actually gets mounted and gets glued onto the fins of the edf so it sits on the back of the edf and then and that's that's how it uh, emits light out the back but and while it's the whole thing it's you know i kept saying in the previous videos due to weight i was losing i was no longer one to one greater than one to one thrust to weight ratio which it definitely was not you know it sagged instead of going up like it w did before um i don't think it's a weight issue because this really doesn't weigh a whole lot uh i mean it's got some weight but not a whole lot i think personally it's because of this thing it just cuts down on the um, on the airflow. I mean, it's you know the it sits over the the outrunner right here, so the outrunner is actually inside here, and it gets and it gets attached to the EDF splines, and so the the fan is right here and it's blowing, and I think some of it's getting in there, some of it is blowing into here, and uh, getting caught up inside there, so. I, I like my planes flying as fast as possible and I decided to go ahead and take this out unfortunately it was probably a waste of money it was kind of cool to see it though um, if you saw my build video earlier you'll see that in there and uh, but I'm about performance on my planes so um, I, I, I think that I'll get back to one to one ratio and well I know I will uh, but I was getting with this lipo it, and now that I'm switching to LIHV, they say it gives about, I think it said, somebody had said it gives you about a 10 to 15% performance increase. So that's pretty significant. So it'll get back to being greater in one-to-one -one and being a lot faster. So uh, anyways, that's it for now.